evolution of games and then the internet has been in the direction of, hey, how can we sell people buttons that they press to get dopamine? That's advertising. That's how the internet works at a really foundational level. That's the economy of the internet. It's all about the attention economy. It's the addiction economy. They're giving us things on purpose to try and get us hooked. The book that they all use that tells them how to build apps that keep people's attention is called Hooked. This is the Bible of Silicon Valley. So our world is designed to get us addicted. It gets us addicted by manipulating this fact about the way that our brain deals with dopamine. When you have that kind of an environment, you're going to have dopamine dysregulation. So we're not capable individually of dealing with this. Our brains haven't evolved anything. So we get too much of that. Our brains will trip over into a dysregulated state where our dopamine basically is behaving in a way that our brain isn't designed to deal with. So we're overloaded with dopamine. We're hunting it too much. Dopamine dysregulation is one of the biggest undercause, like it's one of the biggest pathologies, the, the sort of like this, the biochemistry of ADHD. If you have dopamine dysregulation, you're going to look like you've got ADHD. So there's a lot of people right now who are getting ADHD diagnosis. If you took their smartphones away from them for two weeks, apparently it's two weeks, the ADHD symptoms go away. So there's a bunch of people who have got underlying ADHD that's like developmentally, traumatically triggered in early childhood. And that's a really legitimate, difficult experience to have. But that's probably something like up to 20% of the population. At the moment, I consider anyone who's basically a millennial or younger, I think it's probably like 80 to 90% are going to be showing ADHD behavior because we've been functionally induced into this dysregulated dopamine state, which just looks like ADHD. So everyone's going, oh, yeah, I struggle with that. It's good. Yeah, that's because these little asshole engines are manipulating your brain, are triggering you into that. So yes, it's cultural, but I think it's being driven by really deep reasons. It's like culture to hang out in the sunshine. It's driven by the fact that the sun comes out. But we like hanging out in the sunshine. So you end up with cafe culture. So yes, there's a culture, but I think it's being driven by like a really fundamental biochemical fact about how our brains work. So brilliant. That's a very thorough explanation or answer to the, to the question. So given what you just said, are you sort of implying that there's a spectrum of ADHD and where every single person sits on that spectrum with a certain sort of susceptibility or predisposition to displaying ADHD type symptoms as a result of their environment. So uh, so the point I'm trying to make is that someone, person X can tolerate more, I don't know, what's the chemical sort of way of explaining it, has a greater resistance to, or maybe what would you say? is more sensitive to a dopamine hit and therefore it satiates them better and then person and then person Y has less of a sensitivity to, to a dopamine hit and therefore needs a greater stimulus to um, evoke that sort of satiating feeling. And then is that a biological, I suppose it's biological and it's environmental, isn't it, at the same time? And obviously, as you said, we're just breeding a culture of people that are probably going to lean towards person Y as we progress through the technological advances that we're currently on. I'll tell you a story. 